Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Creepy Basement, aka the Axe Workshop. So real quick, before we get outside and chop some wood, I just kind of want to go over, um, you know, why it's a review with a twist. So, I took the Woodcraft pack axe and I hung it on a 26 inch straight handle. I bought these handles from a guy I found on Facebook. He goes by Houston Handle. Um, I saw him make a couple posts and some axe pages, and I said, hey, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. So I got to chatting with the guy a little bit, and uh, bought two handles. He sent them out to me super quick, and I'll tell you what, guys, I'm very, very impressed. As most of you guys know, handles, or good quality handles are, uh, you know, they're tough to come by. The, the quality of craftsmanship is just kind of gone these days, but uh, Houston Handle, you got my thumbs up, man. Um, you really knocked it out of the park. The quality of these handles are, are really, really nice. And guys, I did pay for the handle. This isn't like a bias review where, you know, I got them for free, so uh, naturally I'm going to say everything great about them. I, Like I said, I paid for them with my money, and guys, next to perfect grain orientation. The guy's paying attention to detail. He is listening to the Axe community. I don't know if he's doing it on his own by himself or if he's got someone making them for him, but you know, he's doing an exceptional job. I'll show you how the handle came to me before I tuned it up and before I hung it. This is how the handle looked before I hung it and tuned it up. He gives you a nice palm swell to work with there. They come with no kerf cut. You have to put your own kerf in it, which I like because a lot of times you go to the hardware store and you have a kerf shooting off to one side or the other or it's favoring one side of the eye. So I thought that was really cool. I noticed Killinger does that as well. So I like that. Um, again, this one has next to perfect grain orientation just like the one I put in my axe. They do come a little thick. Uh, I brought my micrometer out just for fun and it comes in at 0.98 there you go I don't know where that is 0.986 so the handle's about an inch thick and that's pretty much exactly how thick the Husqvarna handle came stock so I'll show you what I did to mine you can see I changed my palm swell versus how it comes and I thinned my handle out to 0.77. So I thinned my handle down to just about three quarters of an inch thick. I didn't take too much out of here. Uh, you can see I kind of took this sharp point off here and made it sweep nicely. Not that his doesn't, I just you know, with the smaller head, I didn't want this sticking way out. So I did that. I gave it a little bit more of a sweep. Like I said, I fixed up the palm swell to my liking. But uh, yeah, very quality handles. So again, Houston handle knocked it out of the park. I'm very, very satisfied. Um, I cannot wait to go out and swing this thing because I think it's going to perform extremely well at this length. Alrighty guys, so one more thing before we go outside and chop. Got a little package in the mail today. It came all the way from New Zealand from Brett Brown. Brett, thank you so much, man. It is so cool of you to do. I really appreciate it. Let's open this thing up. Got a little note inside. I'm gonna save this, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, braids, braids, axe head. I, I believe that's British. I remember watching uh, some Ben Scott videos, and I think he used um, a braids axe. So I, I think that's. I think it's British. Anyway, let's get into it. Oh man, that's so cool. Look how he has it packaged here, guys. So here's the head. And he's got some wood shavings in here for uh, for dampening. 
Super cool, man. I like the I like the aesthetics. I really do. That's awesome. That's a really good idea. I still didn't sharpen this knife in the last time I've opened something. I said I was going to. Ha <laughs> ha! Dayton. Man, you know me too well. I love Dayton heads. They're probably my favorite out of all the axes I have. Wow. This is so cool. Guys, this came all the way from New Zealand. Brett, <laughs> thank you so much, man. This is so cool. Ah, it's beautiful. Let's get you guys a nice close-up there. See the little imprint there? It says braids. Is it braids or brads? Someone correct me on that. It says two and three quarter, made in England. All right. Man. So, this thing started in England, somehow made it to New Zealand, and now it's in... Northeast Pennsylvania in the United States. Brett, again, thank you so much, man. This is this is so cool. <laughs> I'm going to hang this as soon as possible and get it outside in the woods. And uh, I'll be sure to make a video on it because this is going to be this is going to be a user, man. This is beautiful. You know what? Maybe What do you think, guys? Put it on the Killinger French Curve. Put the braids axe on the Killinger French Curve. Yeah, I think that's what's gonna have to happen. I don't know. Brett, again, thank you so much, man. Um, I'm gonna put this aside, get ready to hang it, and I will meet you guys out in the woods. I just gotta throw some boots on and maybe a small coat. So I'll give you guys a head start I'll meet you there. Alrighty guys, so we finally made it out here in the woods. Um, Wednesday when I got out of the creepy basement, I opened the front door and it was pouring down like crazy. So it's now Saturday. Um, and also I do apologize. I said Wednesday the third, I believe it was the second, whatever, all, they all blend together anyhow. So with that said, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna test out the Woodcraft pack axe now with the 26 inch handle, see how different it is. Um, we're going to try it out in this beech tree. Beech tree's not big, but not small. I can't get both my hands around it. Actually, I'm far from getting both my hands around it. And just like the original, um, the original, uh, review video, I compared it to the Husqvarna multi-purpose forest axe. So I figured it was only right to bring that back out here with it. And I think it's a little more comparable now, being that they're both 26 inches, or somewhere right around there, maybe 25 and a half. But that's not the only reason why I brought the Husqvarna out here with me. Uh, something recently um, happened within the past maybe week or so that I wanted to talk about and get your guys' opinion on. And the reason why I bring this is because this was the actual... Uh, acts in question. So I hope you guys stick around a little bit. I know there's a lot of talking in this video, but um, I think you'll find it kind of interesting. So about halfway through, I'm gonna I'll stop for a little bit and and BS with you guys. All right, guys, let's get chopping. Wow, guys, I could already, it's so much better. Completely different axe.
Alrighty, so I got this whole side bucked up with the council tool. And I think it's only right to do the opposite side with the Husqvarna. That way we get a good feeling of both axes doing the same work. Alrighty guys, I'll try to keep this as concise as possible, but quick little story regarding the Husqvarna um, forest axe, sorry, brain fart. And now, this is in regards to any axe, essentially, um, light axe, heavy axe, but this axe was the axe being used in particular. Not my axe exclusively, but this model acts. So about a week or so ago, I saw a video of somebody using this ax and um, they were being extremely unsafe and I can tell that they weren't very um, experienced in using an ax. Mind you, most of you guys know I only started chopping back in October, so I am very new to this myself. But uh, I feel like I've been doing it long enough to understand, you know, how to use an axe safely at least. Or, um, you know, I don't want to say the right way. It kind of sounds messed up. But, you know, use the axe the right way. And I saw somebody using this axe and they were swinging. Now, mind you, the tree that they were chopping looks like it was a, a tree that fell over and got stuck on something else because it was about waist height so the guy swinging the axe is standing there and he's got you know he's not doing the where you bring your hand down like you know like that he's got both hands down like like this and he's going from over his head and I'm not going to do it into a real piece of wood and I also I have my sheath on here because what this guy was doing um, I'm surprised he didn't get hurt, but he was going up over his head and slamming this thing down into a piece of wood like that. And I mean, the, the guy was like lightning. He didn't hit the same place twice at all. Just boom, boom. And I had to click out of the video because I didn't know if I was about to watch a video where someone got cut. I don't really have a strong stomach for things like that, but, uh, I clicked back and I felt obligated to give advice and I don't know if I came off, I, I didn't, okay, I didn't. I didn't come off rude or anything like that. Now understand this, um, and at, I, 
I get this just from being like dealing with people all the time at work. If I'm part of the safety committee at work and, you know, I don't think because I'm in the safety committee, I'm obligated to do this, but it did open my eyes to it more. But if you see something unsafe or you see something someone's doing wrong, you, you don't run up, approach the person and give them the whole list of everything they did wrong. You did this, you did that. And then you start being, you know, uh, you know, you, it's essentially you're, you're being mean really like, and I don't want to sound like soft, but like, that's to me, that's ignorant. You don't just go and point out everyone's flaws, everything they're doing wrong. If you feel like you can give advice, point out what they did wrong, but also have some kind of way to help them improve, then that's great. Yeah, the truth does hurt. Hey man, you're doing this wrong, but here's some ways you could you could do this better, you could do this more safely. So what I wrote to him, and this is almost verbatim, I said, hey man, cool video, but I just want to point a couple of things out. You're being extremely unsafe with that axe and you're going to hurt yourself pretty much is what I told him. Like, I, I don't think you should be chopping that way. And I think you should take a step back and learn some more fundamentals. Um, and like I said, I always like to, you know, point out a flaw, but also follow it up with, here's some ways you can fix that. So I told him, I definitely think you should check out a couple videos, um, that uh, Steve Edholm made from Skill Colt. I, I brought up a couple of videos like that. And I also brought up Ben Scott's video where he teaches you uh, how to buck a tree that's off the ground, maybe like waist height, uh, as safe as you can. There's really no perfect way to do it, but how he was doing it was not the way. So the guy writes back to me pretty much saying like, screw you, dude, you haven't been chopping long. I've seen your videos. And you're just, you're kind of being an a-hole, but like pretty much he took it as I was being offensive to him and I was just, you know, I wasn't in the right position to give that advice being that I'm, I'm fairly new. Um, so I, I just said, okay, you know, is what it is. I didn't, I didn't write back, you know, I'm not going to get into a piss and match with somebody and it's unfortunate, but a guy like that is going, the only way he's going to learn that he's doing it unsafe or incorrectly is by getting hurt and God, I hope it never happens. I would hate for someone to have to learn the hard way. Um, but guys, was I, was I out of line there? Am I too new to kind of give, to, to, to bring stuff up like that? Or was I wrong? Did I come in a little too hot saying like, Hey man, blah, blah. blah. And I don't know. I kind of, it kind of gave me a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. I kind of felt like I, I, I was out of place. Like I just, I, it wasn't my place to say something. I should have just watched the video or not watched it. And if I did watch it, just acknowledge like, Oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Um, that sucks. But I also felt like maybe I can help someone improve their axemanship and prevent them from getting hurt. But, uh, unfortunately it didn't go like that. Like I said, I didn't want to get into a pissing match with the guy. I was just trying to give some, um, helpful advice and he didn't take well to it. And, uh, yeah, I mean that it is what it is, uh, unfortunately. So, I mean, if, if he sees this video, dude, I, I'm sorry, man, I wasn't trying to be a jerk. I don't want to see you get hurt really. And I would like to see you perform well with an ax. You know, I think this is really cool. We don't have to be out here doing this. It's dangerous, but it's fun. And I'm not saying you're not having fun, but I think, I think you should, like I said before, you should take a step back, you know, go back to basics a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. But I, I do apologize if I offended you. Uh, that that wasn't my intent. That's not the kind of, you know, stuff I want to bring. But anyway, guys, yeah, that's my, that's the story. So let's talk about it. Husqvarna K1 
Council Tool Woodcraft Pack Axe. What are my final thoughts? Well, I gotta say, now that this has a 26 inch handle, I mean, and it's close, it's like 25 ish, but if you hold them up, you can see the um, Husqvarna is slightly longer. But if you look, you would grab here on the Husqvarna, so you have this kind of here, and I would grab like here on that. So it, essentially, you're grabbing around the same place. Okay, anyway, so. Now that this has the length handle it has, 25, 26, it's a completely different axe and I'm absolutely loving it. I think this thing, I don't know, I think it's what it needed, you know, it just feels really good. I'm really enjoying it now. I wasn't really using it before and it was kind of bumming me out because it kind of felt awkward to me using it at, um, after it was hung like 23 inches from Council Tool. And that's just kind of awkward. It's like, is it a hatchet or is it a camp axe? I mean... For more bushcrafty stuff, you know, yeah, absolutely. And guys, you saw it, the, the axe is more than capable. Just for what I wanted to use it for, just kind of fell off. Not saying it might not for you, but uh, everyone's different. That's why, you know, some people like a 19 inch axe, like the uh, Grand Forest Small Forest Axe. To me, it kind of feels awkward. I think a hatchet should be no bigger than 16 inches, no smaller than 14, but that's just what I'm comfortable using. So it's completely subjective, guys. Seriously. Uh, every every axe has the potential to be great uh, to the individual. So don't take those things to heart. Go out and try for yourself. I did, and I found out that uh, that length wasn't for me. So I've, I've been jibber-jabbering this whole time. I, I know you guys probably want to click out of here by now. But one thing I do notice... Uh, about the 26 inch straight versus the 26 inch curve. Straight handle. Just lay this down here. Straight handle, two pound head, the Husqvarna, curved handle, one and three quarter pound. So they're pretty close in weight. Um, what I noticed the most, and I'm not saying that I don't like it, but I will say this. Maybe this just pertains to lighter axe heads. With a lighter head, now I hope this makes sense. So let's say there's a tree here I'm, I'm, I'm chopping. With a lighter head, you almost, and you could see guys, I'm not, I'm not swinging through the wood and I'm not, I'm not swinging very hard and I'm getting work done fairly efficiently because the axe is tuned up and it's working well. Um, and obviously, accuracy. Accuracy is a huge thing. Um, you know hitting the wood as hard as you can and not hitting the same place every time is not going to get the work done fast because you're swinging the axe as hard as you can. It's about being accurate and uh, with a smaller axe uh, not that accuracy is any more or less important depending on what size axe you use but you know you got two pounds of metal on the end of a stick you kind of want to be and with a smaller blade profile you want to be a lot more you know accurate but what I think I'm kind of like going everywhere here so straight handle I notice that with the straight handle I don't get as much of that that whipping action that you kind of I don't want to say you need with a smaller headed axe but I think it absolutely helps so when you have the curved handle now Ben Scott explained this really well when you slide your hand on a curved handle it naturally has that tip forward versus a straight handle it just stays you know right like that and i think with the lighter head you almost want that nice little whip at the end and i think the curved handle helps with that at least that's what i experienced today now like i said when the 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 axes both performed well this was dead beach and it's frozen and it's hard so and the axe the axes I used were maybe a little small for the size tree, but I've also done bigger trees that were green with the Husqvarna and it was fine. But like I said, I think it's super important with a smaller axe to work on technique and to be as efficient as you possibly can. Like I said, not to repeat myself, but accuracy will always beat the, the strength part. You know, you want your work to get done fast. It doesn't mean you hit it hard. 
speed will come with efficiency and that's just how it works that's with anything you do ever you know goes all the way back to grade school the tortoise and the hare story um but yeah not not to you know go in every which direction but i do think what it comes down to is though i think the council tool axe with the straight handle is a lot more comfortable to use now being the length it is I do think I prefer a curved handle. I mean, across the board, I prefer a curved handle, but even more so on a lighter axe. Just for the simple aspect, I feel it works a lot more efficiently when you do get that little snap out of that curved handle versus the straight handle almost just feels more like it just ends. You don't get that last little bit. But guys, I don't want to ramble on forever, and I know I have. I, this is going to be a long video, and I'm pretty sure I said in the beginning it was going to be a short video, so I'm sorry. Please don't crucify me. But, yeah. All right, guys. So that's it. I'm going to wrap it up. Quit running my mouth. I really hope all of you enjoyed the video. I hope you were able to get something out of it. And, guys, please, I encourage you to do the same thing. I encourage you to go out experiment try new things because you just might find what works best for you uh, sometimes how the axe comes from the factory isn't the best it's maybe suitable for most people but it's not for everybody so again I encourage you guys to go out try new things experiment don't be afraid because you spent a hundred and sixty something dollars on an axe to take that handle out of there and throw something else because it just might be a lot better and hey if you don't like it if you were careful taking the handle out, you pop a new one, pop it right back in, re-wedge it. So guys, again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate the support. And a huge, huge thank you to Brett Brown. Man, you, you're you awesome, dude. I, can't, I cannot thank you enough. And the note, I thought that was so cool, man. I really do. That was genuine. And I... From deep down, I appreciate it. I'm going to save it. It's going to stay in my creepy basement axe workshop so again i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope it wasn't too drawn out and i wasn't talking too much and again i'm still talking too much so uh guys thank you so much and uh, i'll see you on the next one